so I'll use her mic. <laughs> One day Armando shared some candy with us or something and said, okay, you can all eat the same piece because you both have the same germs. <laughs> Never heard that before. But I want to say something to all of you. Um, God is calling every one of us. Maybe I'll just tell you a little story before I start, but God is calling all of us. I keep wondering Sunday after Sunday what he's going to give me because what he has given seemed to be so good at the time, but every Sunday there's more. Um, I do not know how many of you saw this. I guess I ought to get my hanky out where I can use it. But uh, my wife said she saw this on television, and I guess the same day uh, I read it on the Internet. Those of you that watch the news may have seen this. Um, Amazon is using now and instituting and has instituted, listen close, a palm to pay. A palm to pay for what they sell. A what? The Bible said when the Antichrist comes, he's going to put a number in your palm and in your forehead that without that you cannot buy or sell. This week, that was in the news, Amazon, you should well know how big they are. I do not know how many of you use them, but the deal is it has begun Pay with your what? If Amazon is doing it, guess what? And the day will come, just like the Lord said it would, when you cannot buy or sell without having the mark of the beast in your palm or in your, your forehead. How many heard this story this week? That's it? Four of us. What do you think? You've got to live without the government being involved when they start that. Because if you agree to use... No, I just, I just want to know how do you feel about it, good or bad. I think it's a bad thing. Let me say this to all of you. This, I like how Sister Denise put it this morning. It doesn't matter what government we have. I'm going to use a few phrases this morning. You'll find, this isn't one of your scriptures. scriptures, brother, but over in the book of Isaiah chapter 9, it's the passage, the scripture there that talks about, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. I believe that's verse 6 of the ninth chapter. But at the beginning of that chapter, chapter 9, The prophet said something about darkness. That when Jesus would come, there would be a great dimness and a great darkness. And then into that great darkness, a great light would shine. Can somebody say, a great light? will shine in the darkness. In our country right now, the blackness is not gray. It is as black as black can be concerning the evil that is overflowing America. I have shared with you several times that the number of Christian people, so-called, has diminished and diminished and diminished until it's less than half of the Americans anymore. Why don't you help me to preach by saying amen? amen. 
If you know anything that I say is true, just go ahead and say amen. amen. The number of millennials that are no longer affiliated with Christianity is growing. They are either done with churches or they are saying none is what I belong to, none. In this time of great darkness, I'm going to name some names. Be you independent. Be you no party. Be you Republican or be you Democrat. The sky is still blue no matter what you are. Nighttime is still dark, no matter what party you belong to. What I'm trying to say to you is it doesn't matter what party you belong to, whatever's happening that's real is real. Churches are now, Christians' universities are now being forced by the law to let males go into the women's showers because they identify as a woman. And this is by law, and it's in Christian universities that the law uh, uh, was brought up and, and it, was, it, was, it was made the judgment that this would be the case. I do not think you realize, well, try that again. I don't know what you realize. But when you have heard me stand up here and say something about homosexuality over and over again, I would like you to know this thing is being jammed down our throats and it is an abomination to God Almighty. It's being jammed down into our grade school, grade one, two, and three. It is so big a deal that it alone is at the top of what Satan is doing in our country right now. People are coming out left and right. I feel like I'm a girl. I feel like I'm a man. I've come out and I've never felt more free. But, it's, but, but this is the body of Christ I'm talking to and whoever will listen to me. God called it an abomination in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's always been an abomination and it will always will be an abomination. You can't clean this thing up. It is evil. It's more evil than me just saying it's evil or God saying it's an abomination. This thing is at the very root and core of what we are as human beings. God made us male and female. There is a thing about that that I need to delve into more. But it matters that we actually know I am a male and you know you are a female. It has to do with the way God set up the world. And if the devil can get rid of that thing that I'm a male and make me a girly man. I flow between... I have gender fluidity. I can be this, I can be that, or I can be nothing. I'm not binary. I'm pansexual. You name it. This business of our sex came from God for a reason that is beyond what we think about when we think about freedom of choice. Free to choose to be who you think you are. There's something deep-seated in that. And Satan knows it. If he can get rid of the identity of what God made you in the natural, he can remove from you any thoughts of the identity of Christ. And he can make you accept any identity. You could come up and say, somebody says, I'm a monkey. I identify as a monkey. Cher is out. Cher. What's his name? Cher. And what was her husband? Sonny and Cher. Cher is out there singing to the elephants. Oh, yeah. Somehow there's some communion there. I'm not sure what it is, but she's trying to bless the <laughs> bless elephants. That's the word, confusion. God is not the author of confusion. This is really a long message that I, I'm not going to stay long. What I want to get to today is the, is the word coming to the light. 
God wants every person in this room to come to the light. God wants everyone in this room to come to the fire of his throne. Do you hear me? He doesn't want you to be in a... He doesn't want you to be the church of the chosen frozen. He doesn't want you to be the church of the popsicle. <laughs> to be quick about it, when he came to baptize us, he, he came to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and the, and the frost, Amen. the icicles, the tundra, the blizzard. Is that what he sent us? The Holy Ghost and what? Fire. Fire. This particular fire is somewhat different than the one on earth. You can go into the fire on earth having this fire in you, and you can come out of the fires on earth and put them out or walk through them. But this fire is different. I haven't used much scripture yet, have I? But I just want to say our world in America, you can look at the rest of the world. They're putting pastors in prison up there in Canada, a bastion of democracy. They're putting them in prison because they are open during the pandemic. So they put the pastor in prison, I almost think, for six months because they had church. I say he had church. So they're having church in secret now in some places. The pastor's here. Who knows where he is? And the, I don't know how, but a great darkness has come across this country. This Equality Act, if you don't know what it is, you ought to go look at it from our General Headquarters website and look at what it says. But it is from hell. It's from the pits of Satan. I said this a few times. I may no longer be on Facebook, so I found out I can actually put my stuff up on um, our website, Wix, up there on Restoration Kogop Day. I can transmit right there. So if you lose me here, why look for me on Vimeo or look for me up on our website. We can do either one. The website's almost free. Yes, thank you, Lord. All I want to say to you is, is there a great darkness that's coming to this country. Yes. A great darkness. The church itself has wolves in her. Yes. Yes. Uh, let me put it a different way. Churches can have wolves, whether they be big, medium, or small. The wolf don't care. You hear about the big, but they're just the same elsewhere. So when you go to church, you need to check me out. And you need to know me. And if I don't preach the truth to you, you need to get out of here. If I do, you need to say to your neighbors, come. Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord's house. Make it your business to say to your neighbors, if you don't have any, go find some. There's a great darkness in our country right now. Those who are in government right now, many of them could care less about Christianity, and they show it every way they can. So do not expect the government to help us at all. If we're going to do what God called us to do, we're going to do it just like he said, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Amen. We will not be friends with the world. The mayor, the governor, the city council may well be our worst enemies, but we don't go forward for Jesus because they let us. We do what we do for Jesus because Jesus commanded us. Live or die. A great darkness has come in this country. Great evil is here. And by all means, I said this one time, I said, you know, wouldn't it be something if our country happens to be that woman called great Babylon, the harlot, the great whore. Look at our country right now. We're going down economically. Internally, we have never been more divided. Yes. Even in the Civil War, we may not have been this divided as a country. And Jesus was clear, a house divided against itself, it shall not, cannot stand. Gross darkness. Instead of being taught to read, 
to write, to speak a sentence clearly, <clears throat> or as my wife has often taught me, how to properly punctuate a sentence. Instead of being able to add up one plus one, instead of using a calculator, let's see, one plus mm, equals, oh, two, wow. <laughs> instead of using a calculator, we don't even have that. We're taught about how we can go out in the streets and be an activist. Say amen. amen. In grade school, second and third grade, that's the curriculum being forced. It, it is there now. How to recognize racism. Racism is everywhere. Everything, you know, your teacup when you go in, if they still have them in a restaurant, where it's a teacup is laying there on top of the saucer and you flip it over to get your coffee, if you flip it over, racism. <laughs> the teacup is white. <laughs> it's a, and the whole system of this restaurant is racism because the teacup is white. More could be said, but you kind of get the idea under every rock, racism, racism. All I want to say to you is this. I'm not interested in that debate. I'm not interested in that discussion. It comes out of the pits of hell. I'm interested in what Jesus wants to do in this world. It's called the kingdom of God. Don't bother telling me about everything that's wrong. I've got an answer for it. I won't find it in Congress. I won't find it in the president. And I will not find it in the vice president. And I will not find it in any laws of our... I'll find it in the word of God. I said this a week or two ago. I said this place needs to be the place where you hear the voice of God and nothing else. Nothing. Thing else but the voice of the Lord. If there's any agreement with that, would somebody say something? Amen. And here we need a clarity to hear what God had to say. The world's going to have a lot to say. I could say it with them, but I'm not. Amen. What do you think? I'm not going to think with you. I'll give you the news when I preach, but don't ask me to get into a conversation about every this and that. I won't. I'm interested in, sh listen here. I'm interested in doing something that'll stop the wrangling unless you're just too far gone. I'm interested in somebody's legs getting completely healed and they stand up. I'm interested in the deaf hearing, the blind being able to see. I'm interested in people who've got kidney disease, suddenly they're healed immediately. I'm interested in somebody who's got COPD that couldn't hardly walk from down there up to here, but now they're running around the building and going up and down the stairs over here, three stories up, and they're still going and say, come on, let's go, let's go, come on. What's the matter with the rest of you all? I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Curtis is quite a leader. Amen. Sister Shirley got out of here Sunday. God, <laughs> God had healed that woman. I'm interested in giving the word. Now, that's what this message is about. Come, listen close. I haven't preached hardly anything. Coming to this fire, Come on. would you say it with me? The world, the world. is waiting yes. for the revelation yes. of the sons of God. They have heard every politician they can hear. Ad nauseum. When it's political season, you can't turn on the TV or the radio or anything. It's politics. What do you think? No, I mean, I can't, you can't do, you can't live on, unless you just shut it off. But you let somebody get healed or raised from the dead. Well, let's go to the Bible. Amen. How many of you are willing to say, you know what? As for me personally and my house. Hold on, you don't know what I'm going to say yet. As for me and my house, we're going to get a hold of the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Amen. We won't be pew setters, pew warmers, bumps on the pew. We're going to be lively stones in the house of God. You fool with us, you're going to get burned. 
We're so hot in Christ. Talk is cheap. I preach a lot of stuff, make you laugh and shout and all that. I'm not interested. I want something to take place inside of us. I, as a matter of fact, it's not my church, it's God's. And he's the one that put the words in here that said, I want you to be filled with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Let me read here. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Who is? He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Can somebody say amen? The real, the real light is Jesus. Matthew 5, verse 13 through 16. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth to his disciples. Everybody claiming Christ is not his disciple, but to you that are. To you that are known by God, he said, you are the salt of the earth. Have you ever gotten salt in your eye? Have you ever gotten salt in a sower on your hand? Surely it made you say, thank God. I've never, I've never enjoyed anything more like that. Well, we're supposed to be that way with the world. We're not supposed to let the world change us. We're supposed to put a fire in them. They can't ignore that burning of the house. Well, let's go on. If the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth. Would you say thenceforth? thenceforth. That word means from now on. <laughs> from now on, it is good for nothing. <laughs> if we don't have this fire of the Holy Ghost in us, we essentially are going to become what? Come on, say it, church. Well, I mean, we might as well preach this together. We're going to become what? What? Uh, that, okay, that must be a different version, but they both say the same thing. Worthless. <laughs> Good for nothing. Not, not only just to fuel, fuel our, <laughs> fool ourselves, a lot of churches have become good for, and they're dead, dying, or gone. We're not going to be that church. It would have been better for them if somebody had stood up in the midst and said, look, we're not going to be that kind of church. I guess nobody was able to have a backbone enough to stand up and say, we're going to be the church of God of the Bible. We're not going to be dead and gone, church. Good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. Verse 14. Just like that first verse about Jesus being the light of the world, this one says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. I am so thankful for you that are going out to visit homes. You hear me? I am so thankful that we are actually on that tape, that leg of our chair. Go ye. And it's actually getting done. New people are in this building today because somebody went. Today, two of them are going to get baptized. And if they, if they act right, <laughs> by next Sunday, they're going to become members. Yeah. Hallelujah. I feel good about it. But I just want to say, we've got to be the real what? But all I want to get at here is, as I said, said, all of you are the light of the world. Everything that says it's a light doesn't make it a light. But if Jesus is burning inside of you, and especially if the Holy Ghost is down inside of you, you can't listen. You, one fellow tried to shut up and not preach the word of God that God had put in him. But sister and brother, uh, the Bible said it was like a fire shut up in his bosom and it could not keep it to himself. He was around some people who didn't want to hear what he had to say. So he decided, I just won't tell them anything. We can't be that church. I want something burning inside of me, amen, that I just can't help myself to tell what the good Lord God Almighty has done for me. Yeah. 
It is a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Now, when I was growing up, we had bushel baskets for the, for the, for the, uh, for the, the beans that we had to snap after we picked them off the vine and brought them in bushel baskets. So if that's what they're talking about or whatever it is that will cover up the light of the Lord, that means your family says you cannot do it. We are more important to you than your church and more important to you than sharing the gospel. That cannot be. Pastor, I'm going to stay home with so-and-so. They're sick. I'm well, but they're sick. Pastor, I can't come to church because I'm sick. Matter of fact, the whole family is going to stay home because one member is sick. I want to preach about that. You ought to go to church. You might come home with something that will heal them. Let's try an amen to that one. Everybody stayed home because one person was sick. Can you get a hold of that one? I can't. Mm -mm. If somebody's sick, I ought to be in church praying for them and call the church to pray and then come home and say, you know, God's done something. Let me lay my hands on you. And in the name of who? Yes! Instead of laying up in the bed with the sick saying, I'm as sick as you are, or I, I, they're there, honey. Am I preaching too hard? Yeah, I better move on. That's meddling. They call that meddling. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Am I putting you to sleep? No. I want our church to be a model of the house of God. If you don't know Jesus today, he's calling you to come to the light. Let me go a little further. I know I didn't have this quite in order, but uh, if you will, I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 60. What happened to the time? Is that what it was? Well, amen to that. Isaiah. Is it all right if I just share these with you and then I get out of the way and we're going to baptize these people? Amen. Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2. Arise. Would you read this with me? Would you read it with me? Arise, shine. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Stop for just a moment. Do you feel like something has happened to you that will make you get up? Rise up and shine. You feel the same way? How do you feel about it? Arise and what? How do you feel about it? Does anybody else feel the same way? It's time to get up. And shine, for thy light is come. Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness, the people. Can we say that next word real loud? His what? His what? His glory! His glory. Gross darkness. You're living in it right now it's not going to get better it's good to see you brandy but listen to me listen to me i'll just say it to the rest of the church okay listen folks we haven't got any time to be in out up down all around we need to be what with how many feet? I'm going to say something that I've been thinking about. This church is moving on. It's like a train that's moving on. You can either get on or you're going to miss the train. I didn't start it. I'm not the one in charge of it. But Jesus is moving the church along. And one day, ready or not, this church is going, I'm talking about the whole body is going up to heaven. Ready or not, we're going up and the train will be gone. All of us need to know we need to be in with Jesus and not up and down and all around. Because when he comes, <laughs> we need to be ready.
to meet the Lord, have our work done. Long message. And gross darkness shall, uh, uh, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Can we get an amen? amen. That glory of the Lord. Let me go a little further. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Some of you have heard this. Some of you have never heard it. But this happened to the early church. After Jesus would go back to heaven, just his last words to the people on earth while he was here on the earth with them are these. Well, they aren't these. <laughs> Got the wrong one. Let me just tell you in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, he said, he, the Bible said he commanded his disciples. You don't have to go there, brother. But the Bible said he, would you say commanded? Amen. His disciples not to leave Jerusalem until they be, until, uh, until, okay, I know that's correct, but it's another verse, another place. But it, what he said was, don't leave until you receive the promise of the Father that I've been telling you about while I was here, called the baptism of the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Don't you leave. In verse 8 of the same chapter, he went further and he said, these signs, or excuse me, he said, and, can't believe this. And when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. You're not going to be witnesses who just saw something happen. Can I get a well now? You're going to be witnesses that can do exactly the same thing Jesus did. Let's not skirt the elephant in the room. Because in this congregation right here, God has been giving us of his spirit. And he's going to do more and more and more. And as he does it, we're going to see what Jesus did. And the lame are going to walk. The blind are going to see already. Some are being healed. They're right here in the room today. And there's going to be more and more and more and more. It'll happen here. It'll happen while we're knocking on doors. Blind, we'll see demons are going to be cast out. Stop being scared of the devil. Amen. The Holy Ghost is in no sense of the word afraid of the devil. And when he shows up in our children, Come on now. don't be shocked because he's showing up in kids today. Children. I guess I better close right about here with this. The children that are in this world are not coming from the church house when they go home. They're coming from every house that their parents have made for them. So many kids today have no real godly home life. They have no godly husband, no godly wife. They have no godly father. They have no godly mother. And they grow up in whatever. Maybe it's a fatherless home. Maybe it's a motherless home. <laughs> or they don't have either one. And they just live from couch to couch. But while they're out there without God's protection of a godly husband... A godly wife, a godly father, and a godly mother, Satan, is saturating them with a flood from hell in their schools, in their society of children that they run with or young people they run with. And when they get home, are they listening to all kind of witch stories? One of them is called the good witch. She is no good witch at all. She's of the devil. 
And there's no good witch at all. The walking dead will not bring any life of Jesus into your life. I don't know what we're seeing in all these games today, but for the most part, all I see is mayhem, killing, kill them, shoot them down, run them over with cars. Yes, young man. Hmm? You mean it's not a bad game? There are some good games. I'm not talking about them. What I'm talking to you about is that our kids are being raised up on, what's that one called? Uh, mortify, morta, mortal combat. Been there, done that, huh? I see. Grand Theft Auto. Cut them in half with a machine gun before they cut you in half. Then you go out to play soccer. Softball. No, you don't. You go out to, if I need to, I'm going to. Yeah. I'm trying to say something to our church. I want you to hear this. These kids that are coming into our church right now are coming from the pits of hell sometimes and what homes they are living in. They're bringing it right where? We better have the goods to get rid of Satan in their lives. So if you don't have this that I'm talking about, I'll close with these few thoughts, and I'm done. Moses, when he went up in the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments the second time, the Bible said he was there 40 days and 40 nights. When he came out of the mountain, his face was shining. The people were scared. They'd never seen anything like that before. Stay with me. Stay with me. They'd never seen anything like that before. And he had to put a veil, a mask, <laughs> on his face so they wouldn't be scared of him. One day, a man by the name of Elijah, new subject, went up on a mountain called Mount Carmel. And he was going to have a showdown with 800 prophets of Satan. He rebuilt an altar to God. They built an altar to their God called Baal. The deal was, whoever sends fire down from heaven on the altar and the sacrifice, let him be God. And he let them go first to cry out to their God. Well, there was no answer all day long. Finally, he said, it's my turn. He, he poured water over his 12 barrels, over the the meat and everything. And then he said a simple prayer. I want you to know we need to, we need to be able to do this. Yeah, that simple prayer, he said, now let them know who's really God. And down out of heaven came fire. It ate up the sacrifice, ate up the water, ate up the dust, ate up the stones, ate up the wood. God is the fire. I'm talking about, but that was a type and a shadow of the fire I'm talking about. Last two, Jesus went up on a mountain one day. He brought Peter, James, and John. While he was there, all of a sudden, everything about him changed. His clothing began to glisten, glistening, and it became white. His face became white as, as light. And he was changed for a few moments we believe into the glory he had before he came to earth for a few moments. From eternity, two men came, Moses and Elijah, and talked with him about his death. Then they left. The shining went away. Then there's us. Don't you depart from Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. God wants every one of us in this church to get more than Moses got, which was a shining face. He wants us to have more than a downpour of the Holy Spirit one time on an altar of bulls and goats. He wants us to have more than Jesus had on that transfiguration for just a few minutes. 
He wants us to be filled with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. I want our children to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. I want prayer down there to take place for that. Do you all hear me? I want you to learn about being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. You need this Holy Ghost. You may be new here, but you need what I'm talking about. Youth, I want you to have prayer down there. I want you to take time to pray for them to get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and make it your business. Bible study. I want us to pray about needs. I don't want us to pray separately. I want us to get some needs, put them on the altar, and begin to pray together. Until the fire is falling in the youth, fire is falling among the children, fire is falling on Wednesday night. Amen. And when we come in here on Sunday morning, we have already fought yes. for the fire. Amen. To each one, whether you're saved or unsaved, Jesus is calling you to come. If you're saved and don't have the sanctification of the Holy Ghost, he's saying, come, receive these. Amen. If you're not saved, he's saying the same to you. Come, get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Don, there is no reason this church can't be completely a 100% filled with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Amen. What do you think about it? Yeah. If it's in the book... We need this. <laughs> My final statement is this, and I'm going to hang it up. This world is not looking for salt that's lost its savor or a light bulb that has gone out. This world is looking for the light. When we visited those homes, people were saying, we've been praying, God, we want a church. Show us a church where something real is going on. We're looking for that. I expect to see people coming from these outreaches. Some have already come, and I expect a whole lot more because we're not going to quit. But people are hungry right now. Let's go find them because we have the Holy Ghost and that with fire. I have a question for you. How many of you have ever been filled with the Holy Ghost and fire with the evidence of speaking in other tongues? Would you raise your hand? You once have had that. Hold them up. Come on, hold them up if you've had that. I see a bunch of you. Hold them up high. I want them to stay up. If you can hold your hand up, hold it up. Okay, there's a lot of us that don't have that. Thank you. One of my purposes from this day forward is to see you all get the Holy Ghost. Every one of you. Would anybody say amen to that? Amen. How many of you that don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost would be willing to say, I want the baptism of the Holy Ghost and that with fire? Would you hold your hand up and say, I want this Holy Ghost? I see hands going up. Take a good look, church. When they come to the altar... Come right on in. You're at the right place at the right time. When they come to that altar to seek these things, amen, when they do, I want you to watch them. Get up there and help them to pray through. Yes. Now, you got to do better than that one. I'm going to say it real soft. Well, would everybody say amen? amen? God bless you. At this time, we're going to baptize two precious souls. And both of them want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Okay. And uh, Sister Carla, it's time for you to do your job. We're going to have a little music. And um, uh, if somebody will take Sister Stacia to the back room and show her what to do. There's Sister Stacia right there. Follow that young lady. And uh, where, where's Carlos at? Carlos? 
Did he? Oh, oh, there he is. Rick, would you take him in there for me? Yeah. Or just take her on in there and show her everything. Yeah. Guard the door. Yeah. If there's some music back there that we could have, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Doesn't this excite you to see somebody getting baptized? God just saved them a little while ago. You don't have to come on the stage anymore. We moved on up a little higher. <laughs> so we can also record this from now on. So uh, if you'd like a recording of this, um, we will record it.
Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to do something a little different, okay? We're not going to ask them to get in front of anything, but I'm going to ask Bob Sparks and um, Joe and Don to come up here, please. Joe and Don, Bob, you can all stand right over there. Can you see the screen? As long as you can see the screen. These just, rec just, just recently, uh, what was it, two weeks ago, got baptized, and I thought uh, Easter Sunday got baptized, and I thought it would be all right for them to stand here as some more come to get baptized. And the uh, way I understand it, we've got three instead of two. And if some more of you out there need to get baptized, uh, why, uh, if you once knew the Lord, fell away from God, and have come back, you need to be baptized again, if you've, even if you have been baptized before. I'll talk to you about that, but you should come visit me. If you've never been baptized and you've gotten saved, whether you're a child uh, or whether you are an adult, youth, whatever, when God saves you, you, the Lord commanded us to be baptized. Amen? One final comment. I remember two weeks, was it two weeks ago? Three? Easter Sunday when I baptized a dawn. I remember the presence of God that was there. It was wonderful. Wonderful. So at this time, uh, we're going to ask, I guess, the ladies to come in first. And uh, I guess is Estacia first. All right. And the cap, both cameras are running. And, oh, yeah, we'll be, oh, sorry, my bad. And, reco and we're recording this. From, from now on, we'll be recording these. All right. Uh, so you can uh, have a copy of that. Okay. Uh, so, Stacia, if you will, be careful and give me your hand. And listen, when you step in this water, don't step flat foot all the way. Um, I believe they told me I, I, maybe I ought to do it the other way, but this way the camera can see us. So I'm going to ask Stacia if you'll come right about here. And uh, uh, I want you to grab your nose with your left hand and hold it tight. And then I want you to take this and I want you to grab, watch this, grab, grab hard because I'm going to pull you with this. Okay. Okay. Um, it is our pleasure today to baptize Stacia Garcia. <laughs> hey, Amen. Come a little further over here. By the authority invested in me in me as a minister of the gospel, to baptize her in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I'd like to say you can't beat this when it's a family affair. <laughs> Amen. You take your left hand and hold your nose tight. Pinch it tight. Grab this right here with this hand and hold it tight. Come right on over here. It is our pleasure again to baptize Carlos Garcia in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. No, 
Is that it? No, that's it. Brandy. She's in the other room. Get ready. Go get her. <laughs> that would have been nice to know. <laughs> um, is it all right if I tell them about this? Yes. Two things. You still want to be members? Yes. Next Sunday, we're going to take both of them in as members in the church. <laughs> Number two. Brother, I get to say this. Brother Carlos has just told me that for all, down through his life, he has felt the call to preach. Amen. Amen. I told him, I said, if he'll honor me, I want to be his mentor and get him raised up. And anybody else that needs to be raised up, we want to see you. I want to say this again. If God has saved your soul and you're living right, he wants you to get baptized. Amen. There's just nothing else to say about it. It is a blessing of the Lord that he has given us, be it a child or a youth or an adult. Sister Brandy. Praise the Lord. And we say praise God one more time. Praise God. Invested in me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I now baptize you, Brandy Bell, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Down through our church time here, we have prayed a long time to see Bob and Joel. They've gone through some hard times, Don, some real hard times, but here they stand. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now here are some folks that are brand new. They're where you once were. Amen. Here's one that's not brand new, but we, I, how shall I put it? Glad you're here. Glad you're here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want to ask all six of you, are you willing to give it all to Jesus? I won't have to go find you anymore. No. I didn't hear anything. Go ahead. Yes, yes. We need you. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Last thing I'm going to say to all six of you. Whatever you are in Christ, whatever level you're at right now, I want you to show these children Jesus. Show our young people consistency, consecration, selling out to Jesus. I'm here, as a young minister said, by the name of Robert South. Back when I was brand new in the state of Oklahoma, I was asked, and I close with this, I was asked to preach a mission message down in Ada to a little conference we were having. I couldn't hardly preach. 
at all. But the message title was simple, and I believe it fits what I am and my wife and many of you sitting in the congregation. The message title was this, Sister Dawn, I am here for the duration. That was almost 50 years ago. We're still here. I want you guys to be here till it's finished. God bless you. Can we give the Lord a hand clap? If you will, uh, she's going to come up and help each one of the ladies, and then you can fall if you have to. <laughs> God bless you. Hug each other. Don't let these folks get away without a good handshake and a good hug of love that you praise God for what he's done in their lives today. So please take time, if you can, to stay a little while. Let them know they're wanted and they're welcome here.